Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Dennis Dirkmat, and I am chair of the Department of Applied Forensic Sciences at Mercyhurst University. Uh, we have both an undergraduate program in the forensic sciences as well as a, a master's program in forensic anthropology, widely recognized as one of the best in the country. I'm also a board certified forensic anthropologist. Um, a forensic anthropologist is someone who who studies human remains from forensic settings. Um, so we're experts in, in human bones, as well as how to process outdoor seeds, to collect evidence, um, understand the evidence as it's sitting in the outdoor scene and try to figure out what happened in the past. How did the individual die at that scene? What happened surrounding that, as well as what happened afterwards? Did, did uh, animals come and disturb the remains or were they on sitting on a, a slope and they they uh, through water transport moved down the scene and so so that that's an interesting aspect of, of my job so I'm a combination of professor teaching classes uh, teaching students how to how to become forensic scientist how to become forensic anthropologist as well as um, actually doing the work and so our our students, both at the undergraduate level and, and the graduate level, um, are, are able to uh, actually do the work and, and get the, the experience to understand what is involved in the discipline. As part of the Career Awareness Day, um, I've been asked to talk about sort of my career path and how, how I got to this point, and so I, I will try to do that. I'll explain... Um, in the early days, uh, what my, my education was and what I think is important activities, events that, that occurred along the way. Um, hopefully that might help you decide what you want to do with your life and your career. I went to the University of Pittsburgh. I, I was thinking of studying um, ancient humans from Africa. I had, uh, had read all of the National Geographic articles there. Um, and so I went to the University of Pittsburgh and, and uh, enrolled there in the anthropology program. So I was going to be an anthropology major. And anthropology is a study of, of mankind. And so it's very wide ranging, ranging um, from, from the social aspects of humans all the way down to their bones and what it means to human origins um, as um, Louis Leakey and some of the others, um, Don Johansson, that you're familiar with today. So I went into Pitt, um, and, and in the first year, I had an idea that I wanted to do anthropology, but it was sort of a, an ill-formed um, idea. I didn't really know much about anthropology, and so uh, the undergraduate career was one in which I explored the various aspects of, of uh, basically natural science, but focusing on anthropology. Um, so I took a number of, of introductory classes as well as advanced classes and, and soon learned that, that I was interested and had an aptitude with dealing with, with bones, both animal bones and, and human bones. And so that, that took me on my path. I, I then, then solidified my choice as a major um, by my by my uh, sophomore or even junior year, and then worked hard on, on those particular classes and, and worked all the time. Um, and what happened along the way is that the graduate students in the program um, all graduated, and so there was opportunities for me. Uh, one was related to studying animal bones from archeological sites, um, also studying the human remains from archaeological sites. And so I, I, I was taking the class at that point. And so what I decided is to really, really delve into it and, and devote 100% of my energy to learning that. And so um, that's, that's sort of step one, that there was, there was an opportunity. And I had worked hard up to that point and was able to take advantage of that opportunity. And so for my junior and senior year, I was basically the individual who, who analyzed the bones for uh, the anthropology department at the University of Pittsburgh. And so when it came time to figure out what I wanted to do with my career, I, I had some, 
some idea and, and the next step was going to graduate school. And, and since I had a lot of experience there at, at Pitt in the program, I basically stayed there. They asked me to become a graduate student and I eventually got my PhD. And so my, my initial emphasis was on human remains and animal bones from archeological sites, but I had an opportunity to, to give some lectures and some training to the, the Pittsburgh coroner's office. Um, they had some, some cases there, mainly bone cases, which they, they didn't really know exactly what to do. And so, um, and I decided that I would be able to study them and um, it wasn't quite archaeological, but it was something related to the forensic, the forensic sciences. And, and so I investigated this new field of forensic anthropology. Um, it, was, it was a field that was started basically in the 70s, and I, the, I, I was a graduate student in the late 70s. And so I, I became self-taught in the discipline and, and learned everything I could got some experiences working with the, the coroners around Pennsylvania. Um, I had also been interested in the sub-discipline of archaeology. And so I saw very early that archaeology played an important role in what we could do with, with, the, with forensic anthropology. So I, again, dove headfirst into that, learned all I could, um, worked day and night and weekends, et cetera, um, to the point where I became recognized as an expert and then uh, along the way got board certification. And so um, I've been working on forensic anthropology cases ever since. Um, I've done now about a thousand cases throughout Pennsylvania, um, Ohio and New York. And, and actually in 2020, our COVID year, um, I was awarded a um, something called the T. Dell Stewart Award, which, which is the, the highest award in the discipline that, that uh, um, honors uh, lifetime achievement, even though I don't think I'm that old, but I guess I am, and I've been working at it for, for that long. And so um, I also uh, was honored with a, another award, the, the Outstanding Mentorship Award for the discipline, meaning that um, my students thought that i I did a pretty good job of preparing them for for their the next step. Um, a lot of the students that came through Mercyhurst here are now um, now are are leaders in our discipline of forensic anthropology. They they um, got their PhDs or running programs, et cetera. And so it, it's it's a testament that we could we could make a difference in a discipline um, from a small school like Mercyhurst, you know, with four thousand students. So that's the first part of the talk is uh, sort of my background. I don't, um, I, I'm not a genius or anything like that. Um, you know, I see my students here that we bring in from all over the country and the world, and they're they're a lot smarter than I am. But um, what I see from from my attributes is that that I work my butt off. I since the since those are from from high school days on up through uh, getting board certification and becoming a college professor. Um, you start off as an assistant professor, sort of prove yourself. And then after seven years, um, then you become a tenured professor. And um, eventually, then after a certain period of time, then be become a full professor. So um, the, the important aspects of it for me is that you work hard at, at it. Um, you don't take anything for granted, and um, if you do that, then and and opportunities arise, you're able to take advantage of them because you're prepared. the The other important lesson that I see there um, from from my background is that um, you're in high school now, and you're sort of expected to to figure out what you want to do for your career. But um, I mean, it's it's very very shadowy at this at this point. Um, it's not very clear, and that's okay. Um, what I would focus upon is if you have you have an aptitude for something and you've enjoyed it in in high school, um, and I'll and I'll give you the forensic science. We we 
get a lot of students coming in into our program that said, yes, I like the forensic sciences. I haven't had a class in it, and I and I think I like it, um, but I have an aptitude for the natural sciences. I, I like biology and chemistry, and I've done well there, and I think that's what I want to do. I think that is the key part of it. And so then the undergraduate career is going in with an open mind and trying to figure out exactly what you want to do. Um, again, you, you like students come in here, they want to do forensic science, um, but maybe after they take a class, they decide, well, maybe maybe the it's the biology that I like. I like genetics and studying DNA and not necessarily um, in a forensic setting or the forensic aspects of it. Um, that that's that's what you want to do. You want to you want to take some classes and then then decide what is your main interest, what are you good at, and what you want to do at least for the next few years in your life. Um, I would never, uh, I and I, I never followed. I never tell the students to say, okay, um, come up with a plan, and then you're going to be sticking with it for the next fifty years. It's no, it's it's preparing yourself doing the best job that you can do and then prepare for the next step. So so for you guys, it's it's taking a look at, okay, I'm going to go to college. What am I going to focus upon? Um, for students coming into our program, it may be forensic sciences, but after the three years or two years, um, it, it, we, we may not have all of the students that are that are that came in interested in forensic science graduating with a forensic science degree. And that's that's no problem with that. That's that's exactly what we want you guys to do. By the end of the four years, when you graduate, then then you can say, I know exactly what I want to do. And so the next step may be a graduate program or or um, getting a job in the medical legal death investigation or any of those aspects. And so it's all preparation for for the next level. And so looking specifically at, at what I do, um, my career, I'm, I'm a college professor. So what that has required is um, you do well at the undergraduate level. And again, you figure out what you want to do. And then you get a get a get an advanced degree, um, a master's usually, and then a PhD if you want to you want to teach and become a professor at a at a university. And so um, during those graduate student years, that's when you fine tune your expertise and you become you, you publish you do research figure out exactly how you're going to make your your name in the discipline um and then after that is done once you get your phd then it's the process of finding a job at a university which isn't the easiest thing in the world um but by that time you are a known entity and and you've done well and done done the proper research. And so again, leading up to that point, it is um, for me, again, not not the not not a genius or anything like that. It was almost a 24-7 job to to uh, read the relevant literature, to understand what's going on in the field, to make contacts, um, uh, do research, et cetera, et cetera. And so once once you do that, um, once I did that, uh, got my PhD. Then there was an opening here at at Mercyhurst. Um, applied for the job and got the job as a, an assistant professor. Um, and so the the day to day activities of a professor basically you prepare for for classes. Um, and typically you have three or four classes during a term. Uh, you prepare for them. You present them. Um, you figure out how to evaluate the students uh, like any other any other teacher. Um, but at, at this level, there is the other aspects of um, publishing, uh, trying to figure out what what your expertise is in and uh, publish. Some of that, most of it, should be related to the research that you do. And so, so there's all that other aspects of it. It's not just um, preparing for a class that you may have three days a week for for 50 minutes, there's a there's a lot of other things swirling around there, um, helping the students figure out what their career is going to be, um, 
conducting research, trying to get research through grants um, and as well as publishing. So there's there's a lot of things behind that. And oftentimes people look at it and said, well, you you just have a class or two of 50 minutes and it's an easy job. And um, I won't I won't hide the job that it's that if you love the job, it's it's not a hard job. I mean, I love love the job here, all the various aspects of it. I look forward to going to to work every day and and interacting with the students and doing new things and reading about new new aspects of the discipline. And so, uh, aside from the day to day job, that in, in addition to that, I I became a board certified forensic anthropologist, which means that. On average, we do about 100 cases. Those cases involve the police or the coroners or somebody sending me pictures of, of, of bones that they think might be human remains. Um, most of the time, the vast majority of the time, they're animal bones, but the police don't know that. That's an expertise that I have um, that is useful out, out in the world. And so... Um, you know, like last year, we did about 60, 65 of those. People texted me pictures or sent me emails, and I made the, the call because of my expertise in not only human remains, but also animal bones. And I'm able to tell them instantaneously that, no, that is not human remains. That's a white-tailed deer, um, third metatarsal. But, but there are other instances where they send pictures or say we were at a scene where there are human remains, um, and then we respond because because we have an expertise in the processing of outdoor scenes. The police are very good at indoor scenes, but haven't haven't really dealt with outdoor scenes very well. And so the combination of my knowledge of of human remains and human bones, as well as uh, the the knowledge of how to uh, do archaeology at these outdoor scenes to collect evidence that that allow us to reconstruct past events to figure out how long the, the remains have been there is another key aspect of that. In the early days, um, to start off slowly, I, I had acquired an a, uh, expertise in, in animal and human, human bones and had an experience working for the, the Pittsburgh coroner. Um, and then on top of that, I, I spoke to the police and the coroners about the role of forensic anthropology and in how to deal with outdoor scenes. And so um, way back in the day in the 80s got a got a case and said, hey, we're going to be we're going to be um, excavating or or trying to figure out where the remains are located and said, yes, we can help out. We can assist. We did a great job. Um, then the next county over said, oh, I have this, and, and that's, that's how it grew. It's sort of um, by word of mouth um, because we did a good job. And, and the, the main goal for all of these is that we do the best job that can be done. Um, and so we acquired a reputation very early on that we're, we, we were the best in the business, the best option for police when they had remains that were scattered on the surface or buried bodies or even fatal fires and and eventually to um, sort of a specialized aspect of my my uh, expertise is how to deal with with mass disaster scenes so I, I've done a number of those um, eventually led the recovery of a plane crash up in Buffalo there um, we recovered all of the victims and eventually identified all of them um, I also, in, in 2001, was the, the, the primary scientific advisor for uh, the, the coroner of Somerset when, when the plane crashed there. Um, so, so acquiring those positions, um, it's a, it's a accretional thing. You, you do the right thing along the way, build up your expertise, um, don't overblow it, um, just just do the right thing and work work hard. Um, and then here in America, we we assume that um, once you do the right thing, that you will be rewarded down down the way. And so, some of the words of advice from me to you in the audience there that are thinking of a career um, in 
in the natural sciences, uh, bio, biology or chemistry or biochemistry or math. Um, there, there's a lot of lot of uh, ways that you could go. Um, but if you if you have an interest and you do well and an aptitude for it, my my word of advice is to get as much as you can. Um, you don't have to pick you, you don't have to pick one right away, um, but take as take as as much and as uh, diverse a uh, group of classes as you can. And again, when you go to go to college and say, well, I think I want to start off in biology. Um, you may, and it's likely that you won't end up in in specifically exactly where you thought you would you would end up. Um, it's going to be a circuitous path. So um, take take every course as if uh, it might be part of your your eventual career, and and decide whether whether that is of interest to you or of. of of ultimate interest. And so it may not be biology, it may be chemistry, it may not be chemistry, it may be something in the, the forensic sciences, etc. So, so again, when you go to college and you pick a major, um, understand that, that that may not be the end all. Um, I see an undergraduate career as one in which you explore and you decide whether that that is what you want to do, because you will have detailed classes in that particular discipline, you have experts teaching you that and say, this is this is the real deal. This is what you would do if you want to be a, a forensic chemist um, and say, you're going to be in the laboratory. Here's the type of equipment that you will use. These are the types of analyses that you will conduct, et cetera. And you'll expect, be expected to do some research, et cetera. So so a lot of that um, you will gain from your undergraduate career. And then if you're still in the natural sciences, then it'll require a, an advanced degree and a master's or even as a PhD. And then once you become a PhD and you decide you want to do that full time, then becoming a professor is, is a, a viable option. And so those are my words of wisdom. I guess you could call them, um, although... Wisdom usually comes from the wise. I don't know if I can characterize myself as the wise at this point, but um, obviously the best the best thing that we could have done is to, to present this in a classroom and you'd have an opportunity to ask me questions and then it would probably go on for a couple hours rather than uh, the 10 minutes here. Um, but I, I, again, I teach at the, at, Mercier's University, if you have any questions, um, feel free to write me directly or, um, you know, somewhere along the way, um, come, come visit. Uh, e even if you're not considering Mercyhurst um, and, and you're interested in, in a, a natural science discipline, I can, I can discuss some of that with you in, in, and with your parents in, in my office anytime. So thank you for listening. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to write me anytime. Bye.